Apparently, the plan was to reconcile with the Queen sometime in 2023, but then, of course, matters meant that that wasn't able to happen. What do you think of that story? Yeah, we can all write the plot uh, as it goes ahead. Uh, one thing's for sure, we are probably going to be uh, behind the curve. There will be things going on that we don't know about. And there will be a lot of other pressures, I think, that are impacting not just the royal establishment with the new king and his priorities. Our attention is going to turn more and more towards his coronation. But also, uh, Harry and Meghan will have, will have their agenda. Uh, they are launching more legal action against British newspapers. Uh, we don't know what their uh, archwell activities are intended to, to lead to. And, of course, we have the prospect of Prince Harry's memoirs and a Netflix docudrama. So uh, there's lots more on the, on the conveyor belt of Harry and Meghan's stories, lots more on the royal stories conveyor belt, too. What do you reckon the chances are that King Charles will find a way to uh, get himself to the United States before he gets himself to Australia? I think you raise a, an important point there. Wherever King Charles goes for his first overseas tour is going to have great symbolic significance. I hope he chooses a realm. Uh, Australia, Canada, New Zealand, one of the realms, because it seems to me that the, the royal... Uh, the, the, the royal family, and I include all of us in this, the, any of us who have an interest or a, uh, a, a personal commitment or involvement to, to, to the crown, um, the, the, the realms and the Commonwealth should come first. Obviously, though, the king acts on the advice of his ministers, and if his ministers dictate that he should go to the United States or anywhere else, that's where he'll go. Good stuff. Love it to talk to you, Patrick. Uh, keep, uh, keep looking a million bucks. What a good-looking man you are. Thank you, sir. <laughs>